September the 11th, Isaiah 8, 1 through 9, 21. Again the Lord sent me a message. Make a large signboard and write on it the birth announcement of the son I am going to give you. Use capital letters. His name will be Maher Shalal Hashbaz, which means your enemies will soon be destroyed. I asked Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberachiah, both known as honest men, to watch me as I wrote so they could testify that I had written it before the child was even on the way. Then I had sexual intercourse with my wife and she conceived and bore me a son. And the Lord said, Call him Mahir Shalal Hashbaz. This name prophesies that within a couple of years before this child is even old enough to say daddy or mommy, the king of Assyria will invade both Damascus and Samaria and carry away their riches. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, since the people of Jerusalem are planning to refuse my gentle care and are enthusiastic about asking King Reason and King Pekah to come and aid them, therefore I will overwhelm my people with Euphrates' mighty flood. The king of Assyria and all his mighty armies will rage against them. This flood will overflow all its channels and sweep into your land of Judah, O Emmanuel, submerging it from end to end. Do your worst, O Syria and Israel, our enemies but you will not succeed. You will be shattered. Listen to me, all you enemies of ours. Prepare for war against us and perish. Yes, perish. Call your councils of war. Develop your strategies. Prepare your plans of attacking us and perish. For God is with us. The Lord has said in strongest terms, do not, under any circumstances, go along with the plans of Judah to surrender to Syria and Israel. Don't let people call you a traitor for staying true to God. Don't you panic, as so many of your neighbors are doing when they think of Syria and Israel attacking you. Don't fear anything except the Lord of the armies of heaven. If you fear him, you need fear nothing else. He will be your safety. Israel and Judah have refused his care and thereby stumbled against the rock of their salvation and lie fallen and crushed beneath it. God's presence among them has endangered them. Write down all these things I am going to do, says the Lord, and seal it up for the future and trust it to some godly man to pass on down to godly men of future generations. I will wait for the Lord to help us though he is hiding now. My only hope is in him. I and the children God has given me have symbolic names that reveal the plans of the Lord of Heaven's armies for his people. Isaiah means Jehovah will save his people. Shi'ar Jeshub means a remnant shall return. And Mahir Shalal Hashbaz means your enemies will soon be destroyed. So why are you trying to find out the future by consulting witches and mediums? Don't listen to their whisperings and mutterings. Can the living find out the future from the dead? Why not ask your God? Check these witches' words against the word of God, he says. If their messages are different than mine, it is because I have not sent them, for they have no light or truth in them. My people will be led away captive stumbling, weary, and hungry. And because they are hungry, they will rave and shake their fists at heaven and curse their king and their God. Wherever they look, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. And they will be thrust out into the darkness. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair shall not go on forever. Though soon the land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be under God's contempt and judgment, Yet in the future, these very lands, Galilee and northern Transjordan, where lies the road to the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For Israel will again be great, filled with joy like that of reapers when the harvest time has come, and like that of men dividing up the plunder they have won. For God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scourges them, just as he did when he destroyed the vast host of the Midianites by Gideon's little band. 
In that glorious day of peace, there will no longer be the issuing of battle gear, no more the blood-stained uniforms of war. All such will be burned. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. These will be his royal titles. Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding, peaceful government will never end. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice from the throne of his father, David. He will bring true justice and peace to all the nations of the world. This is going to happen because the Lord of Heaven's armies has dedicated himself to it. The Lord has spoken out against that braggart Israel who says that though our land lies in ruins now, we will rebuild it better than before. The sycamore trees are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. The Lord's reply to your bragging is to bring your enemies against you. The Syrians on the east and the Philistines on the west. With bared fangs they will devour Israel. And even then the Lord's anger against you will not be satisfied. His fist will still be poised to smash you. For after all this punishment you will not repent and turn to him, the Lord of heaven's armies. Therefore the Lord in one day will destroy the leaders of Israel and the lying prophets. For the leaders of his people have led them down the paths of ruin. That is why the Lord has no joy in their young men and no mercy upon even the widows and orphans. For they are all filthy mouthed, wicked liars. That is why his anger is not yet satisfied. But his fist is still poised to smash them all. He will burn up all this wickedness, these thorns and briars, and the flames will consume the forests too and send a vast cloud of smoke billowing up from their burning. The land is blackened by that fire, by the wrath of the Lord of heaven's armies. The people are fuel for the fire. Each fights against his brother to steal his food, but will never have enough. Finally, they will even eat their own children. Manasseh against Ephraim, and Ephraim against Manasseh, and both against Judah. Yet even after all this, God's anger is not yet satisfied. His hand is still heavy upon them to crush them. Second Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. This boasting is also foolish, but let me go on. Let me tell about the visions I've had and revelations from the Lord. Fourteen years ago, I was taken up to heaven for a visit. Don't ask me whether my body was there or just my spirit, for I don't know. Only God can answer that. But anyway, there I was in paradise and heard things so astounding that they are beyond a man's power to describe or put in words. And anyway, I am not allowed to tell it to others. That experience is something worth bragging about, but I'm not going to do it. I am going to boast only about how weak I am and how great God is to use such weakness for his glory. I have plenty to boast about and would be no fool in doing it, but I don't want anyone to think more highly of me than he should from what he can actually see in my life and my message. I will say this, because these experiences I had were so tremendous, God was afraid I might be puffed up by them. So I was given a sickness which has been a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to hurt and bother me and prick my pride. Three different times I begged God to make me well again. Each time he said, no, but I am with you. That is all you need. My power shows up best in weak people. Now I am glad to boast about how weak I am. I am glad to be a living demonstration of Christ's power instead of showing off my own power and abilities. Since I know it is all for Christ's good, I am quite happy about the thorn and about insults and hardships, persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The less I have, the more I depend on him. 
Proverbs for today, 23, 4 through 5. Don't weary yourself trying to get rich. Why waste your time? For riches can disappear as though they have the wings of a bird. 